You know, man, lately we have been going into some pretty deep topics on this channel, talking about different rumors, different ideas, different whole situations that can go on in the NHL and how those can happen, how those can't. But today we're chilling things out a little bit. Today we're going over what is pretty much just a bare bones, normal topic as we head into the 2020 NHL entry draft, which will be tomorrow. Or at least the first round is going to be tomorrow. But because we're talking about my favorite team here, the Vancouver Canucks, in this video, I'll put out a disclaimer out there right away that no, none of the stuff we're talking about with the Canucks is actually going to happen tomorrow because they don't have a first round pick tomorrow. Spoiler alert. So Canucks action, that's going to be on day two of the draft. I believe it's just going to be the next day. It's going to be the next morning. So we're going to see what goes on with this information on that day. But this is our Vancouver Canucks 2020 NHL Draft pre-show review, I guess you could say. Now, I didn't do this for the Canadians, I didn't do this with the Red Wings or any of my other favorite teams, but I'm talking about it here for Vancouver because, hey, we need to show the Vancouver fans some love. We've been talking so much about Ekman Larson and Vertanen and Stitcher and trades and all that that let's just focus on what everybody can agree is great, and that is the draft. So, heading into the Vancouver Canucks 2020 NHL Entry Draft, they're actually not in a great position this year, and it really does pain me to say it. You take a look at the first-round picks that the Canucks have had over the past decade, pretty much. In 2011, you had Nick Jensen. In 2012, Brendan Gauntz. 2013, Horvat and Trinkarek. 2014, Vertan and the McCann. 2015, Brock Besser. 2016, Ole Olevi. 2017, Elias Pettersson. 2018, Quinn Hughes. 2019, Vasily Podkolzin. You take a look at that list, and you see some names Names that really do stand out as good NHL players. And you see other names that, frankly, just aren't in the league anymore, and they're kind of tearing things up over there in the KHL, which is, you know, it's good for them, but doesn't really affect the Canucks anymore now, don't they? But this year, the Canucks don't have a first-round pick because, as everybody knows, that pick was traded away in the J.T. Miller trade one year ago. It's the 20th overall pick traded over to Tampa in the J.T. Miller trade. Then the Tampa Bay Lightning traded that pick as well as top prospect Nolan Foote to the New Jersey Devils in exchange for Blake Coleman, who eventually helped them win a Stanley Cup. He scored a goal in Game 6 of the Finals, so I guess it kind of did pay off. But now, that first round pick is over in New Jersey, so the Vancouver Canucks' next piece of action in the draft is actually going to be in the second round. Wait, no, it's not, because they don't have their second round pick either. That was traded alongside of Tyler Madden and Tim Schaller over to the LA Kings in exchange for Tyler Toffoli, who is indeed in the midst of contract extension talks with the Vancouver Canucks right now. So, going over onto the picks the Canucks actually do have. In the third round of the draft, they have themselves the 82nd overall pick. In the fourth round, they have the 113th pick. In the fifth round, 144th. The sixth round 175th and then the seventh round they have the 191st pick now if you're paying attention to the math you're taking a look at all these picks and you're saying okay they're going up by 31 every time that makes sense but they only have the 191st pick in the seventh round what happened there well their own seventh round pick was actually traded away a year ago too it was traded over to new york in exchange for merrick mazanich who eventually was traded to tampa in the jt miller trade that we talked about before this seventh round pick, though, is actually Anaheim's, and the Canucks acquired it alongside of Luke Shen a year ago in exchange for Michael Delzato. So that's a funny trade to go over as well. But the Vancouver Canucks are heading into the 2020 NHL draft with five picks, and they're in rounds three, four, five, six, and seven. So, what exactly are the directions we can go in this commentary? Well, we can go two ways. First off, talk about who the Canucks can actually take with these picks, but secondly, talk about the idea of getting other picks too, because it's been a very common trend, I would say, for Jim Benning in his comments when talking about the draft. Would they like to get more picks? Yes, indeed they would. Benning literally said this a year ago, back when I was in Japan, and I vlogged about it in front of a karaoke bar, and if you remember, we spoke about the idea of the Canucks being in the market of trading for a first or a second or whatever to recuperate the assets lost in the Toffoli and Miller trades. Not saying the Toffoli and Miller trades are bad, it's just, you know, having a first or a second in this year's draft would be very awesome as well. So if you want to improve your hockey team, you try to explore all options, right? 
but in order for the Canucks to do that, they're going to have to get rid of roster players, which is kind of the idea that has been brought up in the media as to whether or not Vertanen or Stetcher or any of these guys that are RFAs could be on their way out, either in a trade for a draft pick or in a trade for Oliver ekman Larson. My goodness, Ugh, that's a big thing that's still going on, apparently. But we'll see if the Vancouver Canucks are actually able to get themselves some firsts or some seconds or whatever. We know there are multiple teams in the first round that do have several picks in that top range. So if there are teams out there willing to negotiate and willing to actually sacrifice a spot in the top 31, we've seen speculation from people in the media saying that New Jersey has their two picks in the middle of the first round on the block. The Senators are in a position where their last pick, the Islanders pick, which is in the bottom four of the draft, maybe on the block as well, so we'll see if there are any options the Vancouver Canucks can do in terms of making negotiations. But when it comes to the actual picks that they have themselves, we have actually gotten word from Thomas Drance on TSN 1040 as to one player, or I guess maybe specifically not one player, but a group of players that Canucks fans can look towards if they wanted to get an idea of where the Canucks may be using that 82nd overall pick. Here's the quote over here on Twitter. There is a goalie that the Canucks are very interested in in the upcoming draft. He should be available when the Canucks pick in the third round. Thomas Drance is still working on getting the name. Now, this quote was mentioned a month ago, but we haven't had any other updates from that since. So the immediate instinct right here from a lot of Canucks fans, myself included, was, okay, this team is not drafting in the top 62. Our first pick comes in the second half of the third round, and we're going to draft a goalie. Huh. Okay, um, you know... Let's just settle down a little bit, because I know Canucks fans are going to be like, wait, we have Demko, wait, we have DiPietro, wait, we have Artur Silovs who is doing things, wait, we have Matthew Thiessen, wait, we have goalies already, why do we need another goalie? And you know, that's a fair assessment to make, for sure. I would say it's fair to question the idea, mostly because Demko and DiPietro, two very good U25 goaltenders, are still developing and still on their way to becoming full-fledged NHL goaltenders, so... Yeah, I mean, you could say Demko's already there, but DiPietro, now he's in a different boat. He's still AHL caliber at the moment, but... You know... It's kind of weird. It's it's kind of weird. If you want to take a look over at the draft rankings, we're going to go over on the Future Considerations website where they have their own rankings fully published. And if you search by goalies, first off, Yaroslav Askarov, he's projected 10th on their board, which is probably not going to be the guy who the Canucks are going to target in the third round. Sorry, that's not going to happen. But the next goalies you have over here are Yo Blomquist, who is indeed with the Carpat. He's 62nd on their ranking. Nico Dawes from the Guelph Storm, 78th, and then you have the goalies after 82nd. You've got the Sherbrooke Phoenix goaltender, you have the US NTDP goaltender, you have Nick Malik from the Osolari Trinac team. You have a whole bunch of goalies going down here, but a lot of these guys aren't really guys that I would say are, you know, locks. So if there indeed is a goaltender that the Canucks take among this group, then It'd be very interesting just to see how that unfolds, especially if he goes third round. Because I'll tell you this, DiPietro went third round, and he's looking pretty okay, I'll say that. But obviously, of course, though, just one goaltender drafted in the past that was good in the third round doesn't make it so that this goalie is guaranteed to be good anyway. Plus, they don't even have Judd Brackett anymore, so that's a completely other story there. We'll see how the Vancouver Canucks are actually able to draft without Brackett. Maybe this was kind of the conspiracy going at it. Maybe they're so open to trading away their firsts and their seconds now because they don't have Brackett, so there's less of an emphasis on the scouting. And I don't want to be the guy who proclaims that that is 100% right, but that's just a conspiracy that I've seen people throw around on Twitter. So just for the sake of tossing ideas around there for discussion fodder, it's just very weird to think about. But everything does align that way, though. The Canucks are no longer with their director of amateur scouting. He's gone over to Minnesota. It'd be interesting to see how Minnesota drafts as well, if they end up with all the steals in 2025 or whatever from the 2020 draft. But for now, the Vancouver Canucks have their own task to fill. Firstly, trying to probably get some first or seconds back. 
Hopefully we see some trades. Hopefully we see some picks coming back. And they're also just going to have to work on actually filling out the roster with these draft picks. So talk to me in the comments what you think about the Vancouver Canucks and their 2020 NHL draft plan. This is kind of one of the times where I'm really happy to be a guy who covers several teams on YouTube, not just the Canucks, because if it's just the Canucks, then man, I'm going to be dry for content the entire two days of the draft. But... We have other teams in the draft to talk about as well on the channel, so I hope you enjoy all those discussions. But for this video, comment down below what you think about the Vancouver Canucks and their 2020 draft. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.